This video is brought to you by my animation courses over at projectcity.tv. I have a new course on drawing the figure for animation and another on animation basics. The links for those are in the description below and I'll provide more details about it at the end. Today's video is about a topic that is crucial to animation and that's solid drawing. We're going to be exercising our solid drawing in two ways, which will be rotating basic forms and doing a character turnaround. I'm going to start this video out with the character turnaround, but if you need a review of basic perspective, I actually pushed that towards the end of the video, so you can just click the timestamp. If basic perspective is not your friend, I highly suggest starting there first. Similar to all the other animation videos, I'm going to be starting out with a rough pass, like you see on the left. I'll then bring that to a tie down, and then finally I'll ink over that to create that clean finish. For your rough pass, it could be as loose as you want. Uh, I tend to sort of make a mannequin that's got a little bit of structure and form to it, but if you want to be really loose and gestural about that, that's totally fine. All right, let's break this down on a 3D model. And trigger warning, this guy's pectorals are so strong your eyeballs may explode, but I'm a fan of Anatomy 360, so let's have a look. When I bring the camera really far back and use a long lens, You'll notice that no matter what angle I turn the character at, uh, everything's going to be horizontal. So the left shoulder is directly across from the right shoulder, the right elbow directly across from the left elbow. This is how we're going to start with our character rotations, because it's a lot easier to get into and requires a little bit less perspective. So a few observations about this rotation. Its widest point is going to be in front view, and then it's going to take up less space as we get into profile view. And you'll also notice that the front view and the back view are almost identical, aside from obviously some of the details. Now let's follow the center line as we turn the character in space. Uh, when we're in front view, that center line is dead center. We're looking directly at it. The more we shift the character, in this case to the right, the center line will continue moving to the right and get closer and closer to the silhouette. Then once we're inside view, that center line just is the silhouette. Okay, now I'm going to draw my character mannequin over the 3D model so you can get a sense of how um, I break these forms down in my head. Crucially, shape is the most important. Uh, you'll notice as I'm going to rotate this form around uh, that these inflection points actually stay very constant. Maintaining these inflection points is what's going to identify your character and make them feel like it's the same model all the way through the rotation. And even though the shape changes a bit as I rotate, you can see in the back view that the shape is almost identical to the front view. Okay, now we have our character in front three quarter. Uh, I like to give myself a little reference cube. I, I think this is good. I found it's really helpful for students because um, it gives you a sense of what perspective you're seeing the character in. I use an ellipse for the arm socket, almost like an action figure. And you can see those inflection points again are still very constant, uh, except now our center line has moved further to the right. Those ellipses really help me get a sense of perspective, uh, and honestly, it's the most invaluable tool an artist has. Uh, I talk more about the specifics of that at the end of this. Okay, now our character is in side view, and you'll notice that this character's body shape um, is wider in front view than it is in side view. So that's an important thing to consider, is that the, the visual length of this character is going to be shrinking down as he gets into side view. Then as we rotate the character even further, and now we're in the back three quarter, you can see he's getting a bit wider and that center line is now shifting back towards the center. And again, you can kind of see that the, uh, the inflection points aren't really changing all that much. Okay, let's give this a go. 
Uh, to continue the FLCL theme, I'm doing Nauta from that show. Uh, and I'm just starting with the front view. As I'm doing this, I'm looking at a character model sheet, which is a front, side, and back view. And once I draw that front view, then I immediately go to the back view because those shapes are going to be incredibly similar. Uh, I'm flipping back and forth as opposed to using onion skin because I'm just more comfortable working that way. Once the back and front views are done, then I move on to the profile view. I like working this way because then it makes the intermediate steps a lot easier to do. When doing these rotations, I try to keep the head positioning really consistent because that's generally where your eye is going to focus, and we're rotating around a central point in the head. Now I'm working on that front three-quarter view, which is going to be halfway between the front view and the profile view. If you go back to the animation basics video that I did where the, uh, the ball is rotating around a circle, you can think of the hands and feet as balls that are orbiting around the body. This also means that the spacing is going to be smaller towards the edges and wider as we get closer to profile view. Another way you can think about it is, as we turn into profile view, the gap or the distance between the left and right knee is going to get smaller, and same for the hands and shoulders. I know for me that ellipse on the shoulder socket is a really valuable tool for figuring out the perspective of the character. Okay, I'm going to let the rest of this play out in faster time lapse and then we're going to move on to rotating basic forms. Okay, let's jump into the perspective lesson. The, watch the total length of this. And all this whole time, the minor axis is horizontal, right? Because now instead of it being a, a vertical cylinder, now it's lying on its side. And as we go through, the two factors that are changing are the minor act, or sorry, the, um, the degree of the ellipse aka how wide this shape is so the degree is changing and the length of the cylinder All right so as it's getting closer to us or as it's getting closer to facing directly at us now the the total length shrinking 
until it just becomes the diameter of that circle. And that's its shortest point, right? It just becomes the, the, the diameter of that circle. And uh, yeah, this takes a really long time to get comfortable with, um, but it's it's crucial, right? It's one of those things that's gonna really make moving characters in 3D space so much easier. And um, just for reference, look how on the on this one, I used I pulled the camera further back, and so I just kept these flat. And so, if you look at the diagonals there, or, or these top lines, they're really not very diagonal at all. That's how we're gonna do the um, the character rotation. So all that's changing is the proportion of how much each side is taking up. And then I just added a little bit of shadow to make that come across. All right, let's add on to this. Do you think you could um upload like mobs of these later in the Discord. Sure. Yeah, I, I can upload this exact file um, and I can upload some uh, GIFs of them as well. And oh, GIFs, yeah, that works too, whatever yeah. is easier. Sure. Here, let's let's do this one uh, instead of, instead of um, this going sideways, let's have it vertical where it's coming at us. So in this case, I'll keep my horizon line at center. And we just want to be aware of this total length. So the way I'm going to do this uh, is similar here. I'm going to go pose to pose. So right now, it's vertical. The next pose is going to be horizontal, so at a 90 degree, and then we'll fill in the gaps. And that's how we're going to do it when we do um, our character rotation, right? We're going to do front view, profile view, front view, profile view, and then fill in those gaps. So we got OK, so we've got our front view. Now let's fill in the 45. So the length of this has to shorten. I'm going to keep these lines on the side still horizontal, or sorry, still vertical. Still working that those two terms out in my head, apparently. Let's get that a little bit better. And let me draw through so you guys can see. All right, and the whole time that minor axis is still vertical. I remember um, when I first learned this, <laughs> I took a paper plate and then I stuck a pencil through it. And then I just like made videos of rotating that. So if you want to do something similarly stupid or better than that, if you look at my camera, you got a perfect model with a, a cap and a straw. You can kind of just film that and rotate it. And then because we're lazy, let's just do the vertical flip. Great example, time to get bubble tea. Perfect, exactly. Good excuse to go get some bubble tea. My dog is barking. My dog just learned how to bark. <laughs> she didn't bark for like three years and then just started barking this year. It's crazy. 
She's a silly goose. She's had, she's had enough. Haven't we all? Haven't we all? All right. Okay, so we've got our zero degree, 45 degree, 90, whatever uh, 90 plus 45 is, what is that, 135? Look at that, and then 180. Look at that math. Don't worry, Frankie, we will see you later. All right, so then half of that's gonna be 22.5. This class is ending up to be uh, more math than I thought. All right, and now the ellipse degree, meaning how circular this is, it's got to be halfway between perfectly flat and this. So I'm just going to I'm going to guesstimate something around that. Again, when you're doing these and you're just working this out, use as much reference as possible. So if that means 3D models, if that means getting yourself some some uh little cylinders, whatever, like a, a paper towel tube. Use reference. It's very important. I'm actually going to tone that down a little bit. All right, now we got to go between 45 and the 90 degree. Red bill cans for me. Yeah, perfect. So this is becoming more circular. And, uh, you know, one of the ways I'm trying to preserve proportion is the way I'm starting is I start with those vertical lines on the side. Just trying to keep those in the same spot, although I messed up on this one, but Keep those vertical lines in the same spot. And then the top moves down each time. That's gonna be further down. Not sure why this one was so difficult compared to the others, but whatever. That's what happens. That angle. Yeah. <laughs> Let's play that out. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Oh, that's why. That's what was pissing me off. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing where I just input it and then flip it. Don't mind my upside down miracles. And you're learning a lesson about animation here, which is whenever you can save some work and just reuse something, go ahead and do it. All right, let's add in a little bit of value just to make that read. Like in Gundam, they use that transformation animation every single episode. 
Yeah, exactly. If you want to draw mechs, this is like so necessary. Cool, let's play that out. All right, I did that one on threes just to make it last a little bit longer, be a little bit slower. Um, but you can see the whole time the minor axis is the same. The only way we're achieving that rotation is I'm making the total length smaller and then the degree of that ellipse gets uh, wider and more circular until it's facing directly at me. So the more circular something is, the more it's facing directly at you. All right, that last bit was from my animation class over at Project City. So if this video was helpful and you want to learn from me directly, be sure to head to that link down below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.